And if you came in here broke, busted, and disgusted, but by the time you leave here, I pray that you are blessed. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's turn to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. We're going to do a little bit of reading. Here we stand for the reading of the word, so I'm going to ask you guys just to stand with me for a few more seconds, and we're going to get into it, okay? Y'all doing all right? Good. Matthew chapter 4. My God. We're going to start reading right at verse 1. Usually when the, um, when the preacher gives the pericope, if he just says the chapter, you know, you're just starting at verse 1, okay? So just be ready for, just jump right to verse 1. I know y'all was looking at me like, what verse? Verse 1. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. If you have your Bibles, amen, I want you to turn there in your Bible because I want you to get practice on finding where these places are. But if you don't have your Bible, we're going to put it on the screen for you. Amen? Amen. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights, afterwards, he was hungry. Look at somebody and say, we get hungry sometimes. Come on, look at somebody. Be obedient. Don't just say it. Some of y'all just look straight at me. We get hungry sometimes. No, look at somebody. Look at somebody. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to turn y'all into a community no matter what I have to do. Amen. Look at somebody. You just don't know. The person next to you, they, they going through some stuff too. Y'all could go through some stuff together and get through it. Amen. Look at somebody else. The person you skipped. First apologize to them and then say, we, we get hungry sometimes. We get hungry sometimes. Trouble in my way. I get hungry sometimes. Okay. All right, all right. I just was checking where, checking if we was at God Chasers Baptist Church today. Uh, and when he had fasted for 40, Keith, you were playing those instruments so loud over there. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right. And when he had fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Amen. Verse 3. Now, when the tempter came, amen. Look at somebody else say, The tempter's coming. Listen, let me help you with this right now. No, no matter what you go through, the tempter's coming. I don't care how holy you are, how spiritual you are, how much you go to church, how much you know all your scriptures, the tempter is coming. He came for Jesus, he's coming for you. Don't try to jump down. I don't want to know how holy you are. The tempter's coming. And sometimes you just haven't been tempted in the right way. You can talk about people who've been tempted, my God. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Wait, your time's coming. The tempter's coming. He came for Jesus. Coming for you. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But Jesus answered my God today. And he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up onto a high mountain on the holy city, set him up on the pinnacle of the temple, six, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. See, the devil knows scripture too. Tell me how much scripture you know. The devil knows scripture too. In their hands they'll bail you up. Bless you dash your foot against the sun. Some of y'all know that's Psalms 91. Some of y'all, that's one of your favorite scriptures. He quotes your favorite scripture. <laughs> and Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Verse 8. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give unto you, my God today, I will give unto you if you fall down and worship me, my God. Verse 10 says, then Jesus said to him, get out of here. Get gone. Hey, y'all ever, sometimes y'all be... I just want to be clear because we be praying, oh Lord, I bind the devil in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, if Jesus, 
gone. Gone. He said, that's what he said. It, away with you. Go and get, the message Bible says it like this. It, it, it literally says, go away. Go away. Go away with you. For it is written, you shall worship who? The Lord your God and him only shall you serve. 11. Then the devil left. My God. Because he had to. And behold, the angels came and minister to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help me help them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have somebody, have five somebody and just tell them, tell them, tell the devil to go and get. Tell the devil to go and get. Thank you. Amen. All right. I'm not even going to try to get through all this. So y'all just pray my strength in the Lord. Y'all say amens. We'll be out of here in just a second. Okay. I'm just being perfectly honest. Um, we're going to continue. This is the finale of our series, Bad Words. Come on. This is the finale of our series, Bad Words. Can we celebrate God? Has this helped you at all? Some of y'all, you fixed some of the things that you've said. Why, you, you've caught yourself about to say something crazy. <laughs> And you didn't say it, amen? That's wonderful. So we're, we're starting right at this place. Um, before we start, though, can we welcome our West Campus? Hey, can we give it up for our West Campus? Come on. Oh, y'all got to do better than that. Can we welcome our West Campus? West Campus, what up, yo? What up, West Campus? Okay, beautiful. West, West Side, somebody texted me today, say, is it true that y'all have a West Campus? Yes, yes, it is. It's absolutely true. I paid the rent. I don't care who over there is going. Uh, PK going to be there and somebody else. <laughs> somebody going to be there no matter what. But no, the West Campus is, I mean, they are flourishing, man. And God is blessing them and they're averaging 100 people over there. That is such a wonderful thing. They got kids, church, and everything. So can we, one more time, can we just celebrate our West Campus? And thank y'all so much. And they join us on the simulcast. I know they're going to jump into the simulcast and say, oh, they was getting a worship band this morning. They're going to jump into the simulcast and be like, what was happening over there? Okay. Uh, but we are so grateful to have each and every one of you guys with us. Again, I'm Pastor Dante Banks. Thank you for being here today. I want to get right into this. We've been in a series called Bad Words. What we've been talking about is that our words build our world. Does that make sense? Our words build our world. This is not just a cute saying. This is something that you can see in Genesis chapter 1. God said, the Bible says that when God wanted to see something, he what? He said something, right? When he wanted to see something, he said something. When he wanted to see something, he said something. And whatever he said, then he saw. See, you got to get to the place. Let me help you right here. You got to start to inspect what you expect. Does that make sense? You, if you expect it, you got to look up. Okay, God, you promised me that my children are going to be healed. My God, today, you promised me that my house are gonna, was going to be blessed. You promised me that I would be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when I come, blessed when I go, blessed when I'm in, blessed when I... Genesis chapter 12. You, it, you, like, pray go. It's in there. You got to go read it. But when I'm talking to God, when I'm praying to God, my prayer is for God to remember, to reattach what I have lost or what's gone away from me. Does that make sense? And I'm calling on God to remember his word toward me, to reapply his word towards me. Do y'all get this idea? Okay, so Jesus is, um, uh, he's just, 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 just entering into his ministry. Uh, this is a time between right after he has been baptized. Um, so that means he has already, he's got a few followers, amen. He's got a couple of people who follow him or whatever, but he has been baptized. The Bible says that John the Baptist baptized him and the sky cracked open and he said, and God looked down and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. Are y'all with me today? Yeah. See, I, is this my phone? My God today. What's happening here? Thank you. He said this. I thought I heard somebody else preaching. Uh, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And, and, and right after this moment, the Bible says, and then the spirit led Jesus up into the mountain to be tempted. Now, I want to be clear. I want to clear up some theology. The spirit didn't tempt him. The spirit led him. My God today. But understanding something that when I am led, I will be tempted. 
Okay, y'all don't want to have real church today. I, I, I will be tempted. There is, there is a tempter. He will tempt me, but I love this because the Bible says that he was baptized first and God called down and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. What does that mean? That means I'm already identified as God's child. I already know that I belong to him and can't no devil in hell, my God, stop what God is doing in my life. So if I'm being led by the spirit, I'm just going to go where the spirit said go. I'm just going to do what the spirit said do because I've already been baptized I've already been put into a place where I, I stand in a certain place with God so I trust God amen look at somebody say I trust God look at somebody else and say but I'm tempted I know that's hard to say you don't like it you don't like it I'm not I'm not tempted you know I'm I'm, I'm saved sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost <laughs> so was Jesus the Holy Ghost literally <laughs> came, de descended like a dove onto him, but he was still tempted. Let me help you right here. I just want to free you up because y'all tight this morning. You're going to get tempted. It's okay. You're going to get tempted. The question is not rather, or not, let me say it like this, you're going to get hungry. The question is not rather or not you're going to get hungry because you're going to get hungry. The question is what you do when you're hungry. The question is, what do you do? What's your, what's your base action when you're hungry? I, I, wish I, I wish I was having a men's conference right now. I'll go deeper right here. You got to be careful what you do when you're distracted, when you're anxious, when you're nervous. Where does it take you? What do you do when you're hungry? Where do you go when you're hungry? Ladies, don't just be saying amen. You too. What do you do when you're hungry? What, what, what leads you to gossip? You know, it's the intercessory prayer line. Uh, you know, we should pray for such and such because you know what's going on with her. No, I didn't know nothing, girl. Let me tell you. You got to be careful where you go when you're hungry. You got to watch how, how you feed yourself. My God, today, does that make sense? You got to be careful where you go when you're hungry. Why? Because the enemy knows what you like to eat. The Bible says he went up on the, I, I do not have time for all this. The Bible says he went up on the mountain and he was there uh, fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights. And the very first thing he, pro he offered to him was what? Food. He knew he was fasting. And the very first thing, he, he going to offer you, hey, 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 he going to offer you what you hungry for. And you have to be able to have a ready word to combat the word that he is trying to put in your head and in your heart. Are y'all with me today? Jesus goes up on the mountain. He's on the mountain for 40 days. 40 represents the number of tribulation. Okay? If you look in the Bible, this happened for 40 years. This happened for 40 days. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Are y'all with me today? 40 is the number of tribulation. That's why uh, it's some of y'all uh, just, just getting over 40 here. You need to celebrate God because it's almost over. Amen? <laughs> Something happened. When I turned 40, I stopped worrying about 30-year-old stuff. My God today, like who care about me, what they think about me, if they talking about me. Oh, can I help you today? When I turn 40... You, you, you just wait. Some of y'all right there, 39. Look, somebody wait there. Yes, Lord. Okay, you right there. You're just going to wake up and not care. <laughs> you're just going gonna to wake up with a soul in your heart. I'm praying for a soul. Lift your hands. Praying for a soul in your spirit. You spend too much time worried about what everybody thinks about you and how they feel about you. And the truth is, this is what you got to understand. It was over. The 40 days was Y'all got to see it like I see it. Man, I'm trying to help you see it. It was over. You sure can't tempt me now. My God, today, it's over. What I was suffering about, what I was crying about, what I was worried about, it's over now. Can, can, is there anybody in here who can testify and say, no, 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 it's over now. You can't tempt me with so You, you should have got me at 38. You should have got me at 37. You should have got me at 29. I'm way too grown for this mess now. It's over now. He said, no, it's over now. 40 days, you're going to offer me some bread. My fast is over. I could just hike down this mountain and go eat whatever I want to eat. 
But here it comes. He says, he says, and we're going to go back through this just, just really slowly because I want you to understand something. Um, can we bring up, bring up 1 John? Bring up 1 John. I think it's chapter 16. Is that chapter 2? Chapter 2, verse 16. Thank, thank you so much. Man, Dr. Woods, you're amazing. Thank you. For all that is in the world, let me help you. For all this that is in the world is what? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. The, all that is in the world, what? Is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. I want you to remember this. The devil only got three tricks. The flesh, the eyes, and pride. Wait, wait, that, that's it. That's his playbook. It's that then. You know all the plays, Tom Brady. You get to see all his plays. It's the lust of the flesh. How's he coming? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and what? Come on, say it with me. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and what? Okay, Pastor Dante, what's the lust of the flesh? Well, I mean, y'all grown. What you hungry for? What are you physically hungry for? What does your flesh crave? Some of y'all think I'm talking about sex, but that's just you. That's how your mind thinks, so that's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, dog. <laughs> but what is it? What, what, what is it? What is the thing that you're hungry for? What is the thing, my God, today that you'll skip church for? What is the thing that you'll skip prayer for, that you'll skip reading your Bible for? That's what they do, the lust of the flesh. I'll make it a little more simple for you. Um, as soon as you start reading your Bible, you're so sleepy. Close the book, turn on the TV, you up for two more hours. The lust of the flesh. That's your flesh denying yourself the word of God. You got to fight against that. That's a trick of the enemy. Does that make sense? As soon as you open your Bible, you go open your Bible at 3 o'clock, you'll be like, and the Lord said, <laughs> Jehoshaphat begat the. As soon as y'all see the word begat, y'all be like, no, skip, skip, skip. <laughs> That's all. I'll help you right here. Stop starting your Bible reading at Genesis. Stop doing that. Okay, here, I know it's, it comes in that order, but you don't have to read it in that order, okay? I know that's the way it ships to you, okay? It's chronological, but you don't have to read it chronologically, amen? You can skip around, okay? Start in the book of John. In fact, I can help you right here. The book of John actually predates the book of Genesis. My God today. Why you say that, Pastor Dante? Because in the book of Genesis, it is the beginning of the world. But in the book of John, it's the beginning of the beginning. My God today. <laughs> The book of John says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But in the book of John, it says, in the beginning, whoa, my God, today, there was God, and God was the Word, and the Word was with God. My God, today. So before there was a world, there was a Word. Oh, y'all got me preaching already. Before there was a world, there was a Word. And it'll, it'll give you a little more activity if you start reading right there. Does that make sense? But I'm, I want to go back to this, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. What's the lust of the eye, Pastor Dante? Envy, jealousy, saying I should have what they have, looking at what they have, saying oh, that should be me. I'm, I've told y'all this before, I'll tell y'all this again. Whenever you envy somebody else, you neglect the promise of God for your life. Does that make sense? You're saying, God, you don't have a good enough plan for, what you, for me, so I want what you're giving to Shatavia. I don't know who that is. I try to say names that aren't. If it's a Shatavia in here, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I want what God wants. Can we just stop right there? I want what God wants for me. I, want, I say this when I'm playing cards, dominoes, whatever. It is. I want all of mine. I don't want none of yours. I don't, want none. I don't even play the rules where y'all say, if I call your books, I get to keep. No, I don't play none of that. Because I don't want none of yours. I only want what God put in my hand, my God today. If I say I'm going to get five. Oh, y'all not with me today. Well, bow your heads. We're uh, we going to the 11 o'clock. <laughs> if I say I'm going to get two and a possible, I'm going to get two. And a... It just might. I might get that one. But I'm going to get my two. That's, that's the promise of God for my life. <laughs> Does that make sense? Some of y'all don't, don't know how to play space, so it don't matter. 
I'm trying to help you right here. I'm going to get the promise of God for my life. Does that make sense? The lust of the eye is wanting something that belongs to somebody else. Wanting something that God has given to somebody else. But I only want what God has for me. And here we go. The, the pride of life. The pride of life. I'm this. I'm that. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not. No, no, no. Humble yourself. Whenever you get into a position, oh, no, I ain't doing that. You need to recognize that you, this, is, this was the enemy's problem. This was Satan's issue. The Bible said five eyes got him kicked out of heaven. I shall ascend upon the throne. I shall be like God. I shall, all these five. They, and then, the, then Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from the sky like lightning. My God, today, five eyes got him kicked out of heaven. What are your eyes going to get you kicked out of? Because I'm not. I'm not, I'm not letting nobody, I'm not. Be careful about what your eyes will do. I'm careful when I counsel people. We have a marriage counseling and, and each one of them just keeps saying, I, 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 I. Your marriage is in trouble. You don't know it's in trouble, but pride is in the middle of y'all. That's why y'all sitting on the couch separated like that. You could drive a Mack truck between y'all. <laughs> because you only think about I. But the Bible says that a man, my God today, that a man should leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife and the two shall become what? One, so where the, where, where's the I? We, 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 we. Y'all need to learn French. <laughs> so you got to be careful. So again, lust of the what? Lust of the flesh, lust of the I, and what? Now let's go back. Let's go, let's go back to John chapter 4. This is the same exact playbook. The same exact playbook that the enemy tried to feed to Jesus. Are y'all with me? What was the first one? Lust of the flesh. He said what? I, 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 I'm going to make you hungry. I'm going to make you hungry. Oh, you're already hungry. I'm going to feed you what you're hungry for. He said afterwards he was hungry. We acknowledge that he was hungry. Uh, verse 3. Come on. Now, when the tempter came, he said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to do what? The lust of the flesh. He's not coming to you with a... That's why I'm careful about this. I want to be careful about some of this stuff, but that's why I'm not worried about Halloween or what movies y'all watch on Netflix. Oh, girl, that movie, Demonic. I mean, it might be some demonic elements, but it's a movie. His way really going to get you. Is it your flesh? If it's messing with your flesh, turn it off. If it's messing with your eyes. Some of y'all, that's the one right there. And you keep trying to watch it. <laughs> turn it off. If it, may, if it puffs you up with pride, turn it off. Does that make sense? But I ain't worried about no little goblin. I just want to be clear. Three tricks of the enemy. What? Lust of the flesh. No, y'all say this. I need to know y'all walking out of the Sunday school knowing this stuff. Three tricks of the enemy. What? Uh-huh. And he tried to say, he said, hey, turn these stones into bread. Now, here, here's the game. He could actually turn the stones into bread. That's how powerful your God is. Jesus could have actually turned the stones into bread. He didn't look back at the devil and said, I can't. That would have been a different conversation. What did he say? Verse 4, what did he say? But he answered and said, it is written. That's why I want to help y'all today. It is written. See, you got to answer bad words with good words. Oh, y'all not, y'all not with me. You got to answer bad words with good words. When you feel like bad words are being spoken over your life, you got to answer bad words with good words. That's why you got to fill yourself up with the word. You got to get enough word. You got to know enough songs. You got to listen to enough gospel, listen to enough messages to fill yourself up with the word. So when a bad word comes, you can speak a good word over your life. The Bible says like this, we put down the initial thing for the better thing. We pray about the better promises. My God, today, there is a better promise. Just touch yourself and say, there's a better promise for my life. He says, it is written, man shall not live by what? Bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, every scripture that Jesus retorts to the devil comes out of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is the book of order. 
You might want to go back and read that one. There's some begats in there. I'm warning you now. But it is the book where God starts to put things in order. See, sometimes it's not about rules. It's about order. I'm, I'm done, man. You keep worrying about the rules. It's not about the rules. It's about the order. Jesus died, my God, today for your sin. But he also died so, to bring everything into order order and the Bible says all creation waits and groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God what does that mean it means that the world is waiting for you to get your life in order everything all the fun the wealth of the wicked is held up for the righteous what does that mean it means your wealth is waiting for you to get your life in order you're not gonna get a million dollars till you learn how to do your taxes I'm talking to myself too And stop lying. (laughs) Claiming them people's kids. Them ain't your kids. I'm sorry. I'm talking to my church. West Campus, this wasn't for you. (laughs) Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God is the preceding word. My God, today, because the word is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. It, It is piercing. My God, separating bone from marrow. The word is so good, it is going into your heart. You don't even know it's going in your heart. David said, I, I hid your law in my heart so that I would not sin against you. That, what does that mean, Pastor Dante? It means the more I get it in my spirit, my God, today, the more I get it in my spirit, the less I even have to worry about temptation. I'm getting more word in my spirit. I'm getting more word in my spirit. That's why I got to go to church. I got to get the word in my heart. Not not because I'm perfect, but truly because I'm not perfect. Truly because I don't have it together. So I got to get the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I hid it in my heart. The Bible even says this. It says this. It says when you when you get enough word down in your heart, when you when there is the right time for that word to come out, The Holy Spirit will bring it to your remembrance. Pastor Dante, what does that mean? Well, you ever been talking to somebody and then all of a sudden you just start quoting the scripture? And you didn't even know you knew that scripture? Some of y'all front end. I know some of of my main, some of the worst, I'm going to get in trouble. The worst friends I got be the main ones talking about, you know, you know that God don't like ugly. That's not a scripture, but either way, they know enough to acknowledge God. Does that make sense? They know even people who say they don't believe in God, they still say biblical quotes. You ever heard somebody quoting some Bible stuff and they say they don't even believe in God? You don't even know why you're quoting this foolishness. Half the laws that we have in America are based on the Bible that you don't believe in. Does that make sense? Okay, so I want to get back to this. Every word that what? Proceeds from the mouth of God. Now, let's go to verse 5. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. What's this one? What's this? He set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Let's keep going. I'll give you six. And said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and they will bear you up. What's this one? No, that's why they're out of order. Uh (laughs) Aha. This is the pride of life. It's the pride of life. Uh, He he will give his angels charge over you and they will bear you up. It's all about you. And our church Christianity has become all about us. And y'all don't even come here if I don't tell you that you're going to win. You're going to prosper. You're going to do it. You're going to make it. But that's pride. The truth is, you are going to prosper. You are going to win. You are going to make it because of Jesus. Man, can you just celebrate Jesus? So he said, they'll bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. Keep going. And Jesus said to him, it is written, don't tempt the Lord your God. I love this one. Don't tempt the Lord your God. Don't tempt the Lord your God. You know the Bible says don't tempt God all throughout the Bible except in one place. Ooh. Every other place in the Bible says, you go up on a mountain, you say, God, I'm going to jump off this mountain. He said, okay, jump. jump. <laughs> don't tempt the Lord means don't test the Lord. Don't test the Lord. You go up there, he said, okay, jump. You're going to catch me, right? Well, faith is the substance of things hoped for. <laughs> the evidence of things not seen. 
So we're going to see. <laughs> In one place, though, he says, try me. Try me by this and see won't I open up a window and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. People keep talking about the tithe is dead. The tithe is dead. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. The tithe is not dead. The curse is dead. The tithe is not dead. The promise is still true. Every promise, my God today, every promise from God is yes and amen. The promise is still true. So if I am a, a faithful tither, God said, test me right here. Try me. Try me and see. If you go jump off this building, you jump, you're going to find out. But if you trust God with your, with your dime, I'm telling you. He said, trust me. Try me about this. Okay, let's move on. He said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Uh, eight, again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to them, all these things I will give unto you if you fall down and worship me. What's this one? The lust of the eye. Why? Because they belong to somebody, somebody else. They belong, the kingdoms of the world belong to somebody else. And Jesus hadn't died on the cross to take back the keys to death, hell, and the grave. So he says, all these things I will give to you. You know, you know what he was telling the truth? I mean, he probably wasn't. But he was saying something that was within his power to do. He probably showed him all the liars, all the cheaters. Uh, do you get what I'm saying? All the adulterers, all the gossipers. He said, I'll give them all to you. He said, if you bow down and worship me, 10, come on. But Jesus said, get out of here. Get out of here. For what? It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and only him you shall serve. I want to, I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to land this plane, but I, I'm, I'm going to bring it down like a helicopter. I'm done. I want you to understand something. Two things. The first thing is this. Submit to the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let me say that again. Submit to the Lord, resist the devil. It's not just resist the devil. Submit to the Lord, resist the devil, and he will what? He flee. He got to go. He got to go. This is important because he's been messing with you and messing with your family and messing in your house and your kids been going crazy and doing all this stuff. And you say, why is the devil running rush out in my life? Submit to the Lord. Resist the devil. And he what? He got to go. He got to go. Is there anybody in here who could testify? I did these three things and the devil got up out of my business. Anybody say, I, I submitted to the Lord. I resisted. Yes, I was tempted, but I submitted to my God. I resisted the devil and he had to flee. But here's the last thing I want you to get. It's 11. See, we read all this, but we, we miss 11. Then the devil what? Left. Left. And behold, what? Angels came and ministered to him. Let me help you right now. Because some of y'all have been feeling down, been feeling destitute, and I'm here to tell you your angels are on the way to you. I want to encourage you right here. There are angels coming to rescue you. There are angels coming to minister to you. And when you get into a place where you feel like you've been tempted of the devil, pay attention to where your angels are. Let me help you right here. Pay attention. There's some, there some people in your life, there are angels for you. The Bible says that you may have, you, you, you may have dealt with angels unaware. There's some people in your life, there are angels for you. You got you to gotta know somebody who knows some word that they can speak into your life that could tell you, no, you don't have to do that. No, you don't have to be that. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Hey, man, one, uh, let me deal with the men just for a second. Hey, uh, most of us, we get into trouble when we get isolated. Y'all ain't going to say amen. That's okay. So what the enemy wants to do through lust, lust, and pride is keep you disconnected from everybody who could speak a word into your life. But I'm at the place in my life where I want people to speak good to me. I want people to tell me, hey, PD, you could do it, man. You got it. You all right. You can make it. I was talking to one of my spiritual sons the other day. I had a very difficult week this week. He called me. He just said, hey, man, how you doing? He, he didn't call me. He texted me. Lord, forgive me. He texted me. How you doing? Well, I was going through. I was on a ladder <laughs> right when he said it mad at the world. I said, I'm okay, son. You all right? He said, yeah, I was just checking on you. I said, it's been a hard week. He said, yeah, but you're more than a conqueror. You got this. 
That was it. That was enough. He introduced good word. He introduced good word. And it overcame the bad word that was seeping into my heart and seeping into my head. Does that make sense? So I want you to start to pay attention to the good word. And I want you to recognize when the angels are coming. I was frustrated at that moment. And here comes my angel telling me I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. Thank you, Pastor Kev. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Man. I'm more than a conqueror. To those who are in Christ Jesus, and that's me, I'm in Christ Jesus. But I needed a ready word for the, for the frustration, for the heaviness that was on me. Does that make sense? And if you don't have anybody, if you don't have any angels, open up your Bible. Angels will start showing up. If you feel isolated or disconnected, open up your Bible. I, I gave you two things. Who doesn't have a handout? If you don't have a handout, raise your hand. Everybody got a handout? Oh, y'all got a handout. Man, our team is great. Give it up for our team. You got the handout. So. I gave you two pages at the end of your handout. This is the uh, handout for every sermon that we did um, all the way from the first of the month to now. Okay? At the very end, there's two pages, though. I want to give you those. Two pages. What do they say? One of them is seven scriptures that will get you through depression. Some of y'all came here broke, depressed, sad. There's seven scriptures there. You can read them, read them over again. Read them every day. Seven scriptures, seven days. I will wake up every day and read one of those scriptures and meditate on it day and night. Try to remember it. Well, Y'all got to get back old school now. But they told you to remember the scriptures. David said, I meditate on your word. You know what that meant? It meant I say it over and over and over and over again. I say it over and over. Early in the morning, I meditate on your word. I say it over and over again. Here's the second page. Second page is seven things that will get you through temptation. You've been feeling tempted lately. Something you know you don't got no business doing. This is what I want to, I really want to help you right here. Because sin is something that you know in your heart you shouldn't do. The Bible says in, in 1 John, it says this. Uh, sorry, in the book of James, it says it like this. It says, it says, to know what is right and to do it not, that's sin. So I want you to get into this place where you say, hey, I, I need to feed myself some scriptures. So I gave you two weeks worth. Feed yourself with those scriptures. One of them, my favorite one, is be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, what? Give thanks to the Lord. Can we just do that really quickly at every campus, everywhere? Can we just, you, I don't want you to clap. I just want you to think and thank. I just want you to say, thank you, God. Thank you for being good. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for covering us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't know all the scriptures, God, but I thank you for the ones I do know. You bring them to my remembrance, God. Help me to remember your word. Come on. I want to hear you. Open your mouth and just start saying, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love, God. It is because your love, your compassion fails not toward us. God, I'm so grateful for your love. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray good words. For every person under the sound of my voice.